Hello and welcome to day 3 of the 30 day chart challenge where I try to upload one ggplot tutorial each day. As mentioned before, I'm not following the specific topics of the challenge but stick to the broad categories and use examples from the R gallery. The idea is that in this year's challenge I explore and learn various chart types in R and next year produce the best fitting visualizations for each specific topic. Today we will talk about basic bar charts and the geobar function from the ggplot2 package. Tomorrow I will also include stacked and grouped bar plots and circular bar plots as well. At the end I use this information to display the development of the total market cap of cryptocurrencies from the mid-2013 till today, though this would actually fall under the topic of historical data comparisons. I will be focusing on bar plots created with ggplot2 and the geombar function, but be aware that a lot of good graphs can also be done with the basic R and the bar plot function. For example, if you have to do a chart for a publication where you want to control every tick and line and symbol and color and where text is placed exactly, then you could accomplish that with basic R, but you would need a lot of very specific code that goes over multiple lines where you then specify each value. Before we get started, we should clarify one thing. There are two types of bar charts, geom bar and geom call. Geom bar makes the height of the bar proportional to the number of cases in each group, which means that it uses stat count and by default counts the number of cases at each X position. The following example will make this clear. You're probably familiar with the IRIS dataset, where you have 150 entries of various measures for flower measurements of three different species. So 50 times Setosa, 50 times Versicolor, and Virginica 50 times. So when we pipe this dataset into ggplot and specify that we won't have the species on the x-axis, geombar would do exactly this and count each species and then plot the number. So it produces bar charts that all reach a count of 50. However, if you have a dataset where the category is already counted and you wanted to use geombar, you would run into the following error. So now if we want to put species on x again and use this number for n to plot on the y-axis, this is what happens. It tells you that geombar wants to do a stat count and you can only have one x or y aesthetic being specified. Another alternative is to simply use the geomcall function. As it said in the help, geomcall already uses stat identity and therefore this would work. To produce a very basic bar charts, we create the following test data frame with five different categories and five values. Now ggplot needs the following arguments, a data set, and a mapping. Here the data set is the just created test data set and the mapping would be put name on the x-axis and the value on the y-axis and when we use geom bar we would have to set stat to identity to get the following result. The tidyverse approach is a little bit different because there it's more convenient to just pipe the data set into the function ggplot and then you know the next argument would be the mapping where you simply write aes followed by the value you want to put on the x-axis and then the value that's supposed to go on the y-axis. Now I'm going to show five different ways to change the color of the bars. For this example we're going to use geombar to count the different models from the empty cars data set that have four, six or eight cylinders and we don't have to use stat equals identity because geombar is going to count it and the color would specify the border and fill specifies the inside color. The RGB function requires a value for red, blue and green as well as an alpha that targets the saturation and with this code we get the following coloring. Another way to modify the colors of the bar charts is to specify the factor within the ggplot function with the fill argument. So now it will produce a different color for each cylinder value that looks like this. The legend is not really necessary as the cylinder 4, 6 and 8 is already on the x-axis. We can get rid of this by using the theme legend position equals none. And with the scale fill u set to 0, we would get rid of of the color, producing only gray bars. If we set it to 100, then it would show the colors as before. And with a value in between 0 or 100, like 40, you get this more pasty looking colors because now the U is reduced. A third way would be to use the R color brewer package that has a scale fill brewer function where you can specify the palette to use for coloring. This is the color for set 1, set 2 would look like this and set three like this. 
You can also visit the Crane website for the R Color Brewer package to see which colors would be used if you have more than three factors and what other sets of colors you can specify via the name. You could also use a grayscale with the scale fill gray function where you specify a start and the end from zero where it would be black to one where it would be white. And the fifth way would be to use the scale fill manual function where you can specify each color you want to choose manually in a vector with the color name. There is a way to flip the X and the Y axis. Of course, you could change it in the aesthetics mapping. But a better way to do it is to use the chord flip function that now puts the x-axis on the y-axis position. This can be handy when the names on the x-axis overlap. So for example, the empty cars dataset with the names of the models of the cars is now completely overlapping. But with chord flip, you change the axis positions and now you can read the names of the cars and still have the miles per gallon values displayed nicely. This brings us to the next topic. As you might have noticed, by default, ggplot orders the labels alphanumerically, so from A to B, regardless of the value you want to plot. If you want to change that, there are three different ways. The first option comes from the 4CATS package, which is an anagram of factors. All that's needed here is a mutate, where we turn the model's name into a factor with the FCT reorder function and specify on which value the reordering should be based on. And now it will plot the car with the highest reach per gallon of gas on top. If you want to flip that upside down, you simply include descending order within the FCT reorder function. Another way to reorder the columns without the 4CATS package would be to simply go with the plier or tidyverse functions. So this is the original empty cars data set where when you would plot it, it would be alphabetical. But if you arrange it by miles per gallon and then turn model into a factor, you would get this order that we already saw. So simply use arrange by miles per gallon and then mutate model into a factor based on model and levels model and then you get the same result as before. And the third way would be to use the reorder function from the base R that package. It needs a little bit more code, but the result is the same. It reorders the cars based on miles per gallon. Now with the levels going from the Cadillac Fleetwood to, to Toyota Corolla. So now at the end, I want to show the development of the total crypto market cap since July 2013. It developed from 1 billion to 10 billion three years later to 100 billion in 2017 and now it went over a trillion US dollars and if we would just plot that like this most of the smaller values wouldn't be visible and therefore it's advised to use a, a log scale with the scale via log 10 where you can also specify the labels from the scales package to set it to dollar format and with breaks you can specify that you want to have the lines for 1 billion and 1 trillion and lastly we can add the labels with abbreviation and the dollar symbol and B for billion. With the geom label function, specify the same position as X and Y, add a little value to increase it to see the bar chart, and then we add a title with the labs function and in increase the text size on the X axis. Given that the overlay of the labels was so big, I removed the dollar sign and the B for billion and included it in the title. And now the, the values are easier to read. This concludes the basic bar chart tutorial for ggplot. I hope I see you tomorrow when we go into grouped and stacked bar charts and circular ones. Until then, here at the Data Digest.